All right, now we're ready to dig in and see kind of the fullness of the HR diagram. So here's a, a simulation called the HR Diagram Explorer. I'm just gonna, um, so you don't freak out about any math here, I'm just gonna tell you to ignore this box, okay? Although we just kind of saw, this is showing the relationship between temperature, luminosity, and radius, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Instead, I want you to just look over here at the diagram. We've got luminosity and temperature. Temperature is increasing to the left, so this is our standard HR diagram. And um, in the size comparison chart here, I have the sun on the right, and then the red X marks a, a star, any star, and I can move it around. And this will show me the color of that star and how big it is. Right. So one of the first things we said was that there's this general relationship between luminosity and temperature, right? The hotter something is, the brighter it is. And that's that line we called the main sequence. So I can actually turn the main sequence on right here. This is where stars, when they develop, will typically fall. Like a new star will typically land here on the main sequence. But we also saw, like, well, you might ask, well, like, what's the difference? Like, why would a star be here on the main sequence versus up here? And if you remember, that direction, right, is where we saw increasing mass. So really, the difference between a new star forming here and a new star forming here is just their initial mass. This is a star with one solar mass. So this would be a low mass star and this would be a high mass star. That's really the only difference. And you know, it's okay, you can have stars of different masses. Some stars are big clouds of gas before they form. Some clouds, um, some are smaller clouds and that's perfectly allowed. Okay, so that was the, that's the main sequence. And now another thing I can turn on here on our, on our chart is the, they call them isoradial lines, which is a big, fancy way of saying which way does the radius increase. Okay, and you can see here I have a green line that says one solar radius, and then here's 10 solar radiuses, here's 100 solar radiuses. So earlier we said that the radius increases when you go this way, and here's 1,000 solar radi radii. So here's the, the radius increasing. And each of these lines represents a place where if you had two stars that are on that same line, they have the same radius, they're the same physical size. Okay, so we've actually seen all that stuff before. So let's see some new stuff here in this HR diagram. Remember, all we have to do is measure the luminosity and temperature of a star, and we're getting all this stuff for free. Um, let me think here. The next thing I want to show you, I think, is, is just like let's pick some stars. So let's just say like a star is, is like up here. Boom. Okay, now it's still on the main sequence, right? Um, it's more massive, presumably, because it's up on this part of the HR diagram. You see it's, it's hotter, right? Because look where it is on the scale. If I just drop down my scale, it's hotter than the sun. And so that's why it's bluer, because hotter things are bluer. And it's hard to see in, the, in this size comparison, but it's also much, much brighter than the sun, right? Because the luminosity is higher. And it's also way bigger, okay? Uh, I can see that from the ISO radial lines if I wanted to, right? The, the sun had um, obviously a size of one solar radii. This one is maybe five solar radii, right? It's between one and 10. Okay, so I can kind of move around, um, move around the, the HR diagram and just see what different stars would look like. Let's do that. So, if I go into this area, holy cow, these stars are getting huge, right? This is where I was getting up to like, <laughs> it was like a straight line. This was like a thousand solar radii. I can't even zoom out far enough to see. And the crazy thing is there are stars that are this big. I mean, that's what's really shocking. These are the giant stars, right? And if I go over this way, I'm getting to much, much smaller. And these are really hot. They're still hot. Like, look, I'm down in the really hot temperatures. But look how small these stars are. I mean, look how puny, tiny these dwarf, dwarf stars are. Right, and these are slightly warmer, slightly bigger. Okay, and I so I get this whole range of all different kinds of stars, right? And any given star, there's sort of four quantities I'm talking about. How bright is it? How hot is it? How big is it in terms of its radius? And how massive is it? Okay, and so what I can start to do is show these classes or categories of stars. So I'm gonna turn on this. And now we're starting to see what we saw at the very beginning with our HR diagram, are these categories of stars. 
So if I were to, to measure the luminosity and temperature of a star and it ends up over here, it would be what I call what's called a red giant star. It's red because it's kind of a cooler star, so it's more red. It's giant because it has a very large radius. And it has, because of its large radius, it has a higher luminosity than our sun. It's brighter. Now, if I were to look way down here, find a star down here, this we call a white dwarf. Now, why is it called white? Because it's super hot. It's white hot, right? It's like 20,000 degrees. Why is it a dwarf? Because its radius is so incredibly small. And because its radius is so small, and this is important, I think, because its radius is so small, its luminosity is very low. It's very, very faint, right? It's like a hundredth of the brightness of our sun. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at some real data here. I can actually, on this cool graph, I can actually plot um, real observations. And so if I were to turn on here, um, just, uh, well, I'll just turn them all on. Here you go. These are all real star data points, okay? Real observations of the luminosity and temperature of stars. And there's a few things that you might notice. Um, one of the things I notice is that the stars pri primarily fall along this main sequence, right? And that's why it's called the main sequence. That's where stars are for the vast majority of their quote unquote lives. And then I see there's a huge cluster of these stars up here, which was where we said the red giants were. All right. Curiously, though, I don't see any stars down here in the white dwarfs, which begs the question of like, why do we even label this as white dwarfs if we don't see any stars there? But this is where we have to be careful about like, so we call it in astronomy, we call them selection effects. Why don't I see any down here? Why do I see so many giants and I see so few white dwarfs? Is it because there's way more giants than white dwarfs? Or is there another reason? And maybe you can already see that reason, right? And it, it's because white dwarfs, by their very nature, because they're such small radius, they're very faint, right? See how faint they are. They're a hundredth. They're a thousandth of the brightness of the sun. And of course, they're far away, just like any other star. And so they're really hard to see. In fact, sometimes we don't see any of them. We do, we do see some of them. But in this little graph, none are plotted, right? And so um, this, this just illustrates that some of these stars are more likely to be observed than others. We're more likely to see giants than we are to see these white dwarfs. But there could be, there could be, you know, millions and billions of these white dwarfs. Um, it's just that they're fainter and so they're harder for us to see. In fact, there are millions of these white dwarfs, even in our galaxy. Okay, and now we're ready to return to our original HR diagram. And there's there's like a million versions of this in terms of like how it's illustrated, you know what I mean? Like how they color it and how they you label the sections, but you're gonna see the main, the three main things that I've shown you on any HR diagram. You're of course gonna see the main sequence going right down here. You're gonna see a region of giants. And in, uh, for our purposes, we're really only interested in what we'll call red giants. There are other variations and subtleties about super giants or blue horizontal whatever stuff. But for our intro astronomy, red giants is sufficient. And then we'll have the region of white dwarfs. All right. Cool. So now you've gone through and now you understand this insane complex graph. And you see that it's all built on some really basic relationships between temperature, luminosity, radius, and mass.